Hey. Oh. <laughs> is that maybe the first musical Hey? I think it is. It might be. Ever. That's not, that lyrics never <laughs> the word hey hey has never been appeared in a song. Huh. Then an interesting get mail about that. Yeah. Look, try to come up with one example or a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> uh it is episode. It's a I got, I got 89. Is it 90? It is 90. Wow. It's actually episode 90. It's a prominent number. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's I mean, that's right there. That's a podcast. It's it's the number where you're not sure if grandma should have cake for her birthday. Yeah. That's the number. Surprise party is out. Yeah, for sure. It's very quiet. And people make a big deal that she's awake. Everybody, see you got to come over between noon and two. Yeah. And the, party, and the party activities are different people walking up to the chair she's in and going, are you excited about your birthday? <laughs> You're oh, 90. Boy, I bet you've seen a lot of stuff. And her thinking, oh. Not really. I haven't seen yeah. that much. Yeah. I favored, I saw on a news, there was a news thing where they, you know, they interview old people for the, who have managed to get old sometimes. Mm -hmm. And she's like, are you excited about your birthday? And she goes, and this old lady goes, no, I wish it was over. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> Perfect. Finally, it's so nice. That's got to be the only great thing is the complete freedom. Yeah. They just say shit. And she's right too. Like I it, yeah. I was much more afraid of death in my 30s than I am now. There is a somebody told me about a study that said uh fear of death peaks between like 37 and 42. And then as you get older, it goes down every year. Wow. Coping? Coping mechanisms? coping and maybe maybe the other side of the reduction in like testosterone and the in the youth chemicals where you're just kind of quieter and it's all like it's easier to be a Taoist about things because you're not upset yep by your chemistry some combination of all of that i'm sure yeah or life is a non-stop repeating nightmare <laughs> probably a lot of that Speaking Real. of nonstop, I'm not missing much if I leave. Speaking of nonstop repeating nightmares, uh, we talked about this before, but uh, are you guys gonna do any jokes about like you got to mention it right a little bit? You got to mention it. It doesn't exactly. It's not the dream setup. Yeah. Um, but you know, the way to do any jokes about that kind of stuff is to make fun of the people who are having the wrong reactions and yeah. saying stupid things um and uh, being vile in a a more traditional way right yeah so inevitably i mean already a lot of people on the other side of the political spectrum have said very dumb things and called for very dumb things and contradicted themselves in all kinds of bizarre ways. Yeah. It is still so early. Yeah. And therefore vivid and horrifying. Yeah. That um, the mention can uh, just chill out a room. Yeah. 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 Um, so it's, it, it might be a little bit, I'm not sure. Yeah, it's so weird when you're in the room. Here's my here's my here's a small observation I've made. Religion is bad. It's not great. Always. <laughs> People are very, it seems, frequently inspired to do awful things. And you got people like Netanyahu who can cloak himself behind. Oh, criticize me, and you're anti-Semitic, and you're like, no, you're a government. Nope. Yeah. Yeah, your government, you're on the uh you're not the religious establishment. 
yeah you're and you're not the jews you're a guy you're not you don't always the mistake of letting i mean it happens in the united states where some big mouth will purport to be speaking for the black community and they might in one case be expressing a valid sentiment but also a lot of the other times there's a bunch of members of the black community are like you know that guy's not our boss right yeah you know, he, he's as much a jackass as everybody else because he's just a person yeah no it's almost impossible for one person to represent a group yeah with any accurate yeah. i mean That's i think a- Dads and moms can't even do it for the group they're in charge of. No. Yeah. You, you can't be the spokesman for people who haven't chosen you. Yeah. <laughs> Especially. Yeah. Even if they have, what they're saying is like, it doesn't mean you ascribe to every single thing that comes out of their mouth. Yeah. You know, um, and that's for that. For people who belong to religions too, uh, true. Know? Yeah, which I did. I don't know if you did ever. I don't think you ever did. But um, you know, I would say, "Hey, I'm Catholic," and they go, "Oh, you believe this?" And I would go, well, no, not that. I believe some of this stuff. Yeah, like everybody in every group and or religion, I believe. I'm sure there are people in PETA who are like, "I subscribe to everything they believe, except for six things." Yeah. <laughs> you know, nobody's all the way on board. Yeah, and the ones that are are lunatics. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I don't even think they are. I think they say they are. Yeah. They need the simplicity to get through the day. Yeah. Um, here's the closest I've got. This is how I think you can write a joke about it. This is what I think. I just made this dumb joke. And and I don't say what the joke's about. So if you realize what it's about, you might enjoy it. And if you don't, I'm off the hook. I'm just like, I wish the helpful Honda guys would step in with a solution. I like <laughs> jokes like that. That's that's the best I've got about <laughs> Yeah, it. that's a, a very glancing blow. Yeah. And for some reason, I always found that really funny to like, um, like I, at one point I said, assisted suicide's illegal in LA. Something else for the Honda guys to do because I just find those fun idea of those uh, Honda guys. Yeah, <laughs> I always found that a, a good go-to for cheap laughs. A big memory of the helpful Honda guys from living in LA. Yeah, it's just so a dumb, they've, been, they've been helping them for a while. Yeah, you remember it's just dumb commercials where supposedly they help you do stuff. You're right, and it was some <laughs> non-car stuff, and then I was like, anyway, anyway, uh, you <laughs> picked. Here's the song you picked. You picked the song, I Got a Friend, <laughs> and then I tried to find it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the title is weird. Yes. Because it's not I, you. I've Got a Friend. Yeah. It's called Nobody Knows But Me. Nobody Knows But Me. Um, I and... guess it's, it's called, this song could be called, I've Got a Friend, because... I mean, the refrain is, I've got a friend that nobody knows. Yeah. And then at the very end of the chorus, nobody knows but me. Yeah. So if you were looking at that and you're like, oh, what should I call this song? You would go, oh, uh, I've got a friend. Or I've got a friend that nobody knows. But that's too long. Yep. Um, There is famously already a song called, You've Got a Friend. Yeah. There's probably a song called I've Got a Friend. Did James Taylor write that or cover it? Is uh, that a Carol King? I think it is a Carol King. Yeah, I think so too. Like almost every good song. <laughs> right. <laughs> She's a bullet uh, writer for sure. But as I'm Googling around, it turns out there's also a song called Nobody Knows But Me. <laughs> so what are you going to do? Yeah. <laughs> oh, but that's our Billy Joel. Here's a phrase everybody uses. And here's my, right. my song of it. Here's my spin. Uh, it, um, it's great because it's for kids. It's a children's song. Um, written for an album of children's songs. 
um, by famous pop stars of the time. The time being 1982, I think. And uh, but it's still got some uh, some hallmarks. <laughs> yeah. Which uh, really make me laugh every time I listen to it. And I'm like, oh, he couldn't all the way write a kid song. He had to still be a little bit dicky about it. <laughs> As did all the great classic writers for kids anyway. Yes. And all the stuff that kids like the most anyway. Yeah. And all the stuff that's of actual value to them. That, right. you know, coddling horseshit of only talking about how great sharing is. Right. But I, that's good until they're three. Yeah. They're like, give me some edge. You know what would be a fun story to write for a kid or a movie or what? Is just to straight up make a story about how sometimes it's great not to share. <laughs> and Truly. Delivered that way would be so, that'd be so subversive just because. Uh <laughs> gently about how it's great because in this case you end up with more cake that would be that would be like uh, punk rock for little kids yeah because if you share you're going to get much less cake <laughs> i like it oh that's great that's great what a, uh and yeah you could do a whole album <laughs> <laughs> just like busting myths yeah a, a song about how everybody's different it ain't always good <laughs> everybody's different but you're the best yeah you're... different <laughs> it's natural that's going to make you uncomfortable <laughs> oh great uh let's make that album yeah an album uh it's bruno mars oh well speaking of bruno mars oh bruno. oh He's uh he's hurting for a hit. Yeah, and he Still needs to learn from Bruno in a while. And he needs new equipment. You heard about this, right? I didn't bring oh. this up on purpose. Uh from rest, he was at the rave. What he, happened? He was at the rave in Israel performing and they got out, but wow. left their equipment behind. I did not somehow I didn't hear that. I, I guess it's not the top story. Yeah. And we should have we should have heard it first on our show. Yeah, thanks for nothing. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you, you owe us that scoop. Sometimes when we do our show, the pre-show start stuff, which is what I'm currently calling what we're doing now, but which really is the main show, um, we'll mention stuff. And I think by the time I publish this, I hope this is still relevant. Sadly, I think this will be evergreen. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it certainly has been. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk That's about the problem, this. You know, this is the other problem with doing anything on the show about it. Yeah. It's like, oh, we say something quippy at, you know, 4.30 p.m. when we record the show. How many travesties will happen between that moment and the time the show airs? Yeah. We don't know, so it's you know, it's always best in horrifying situations to let it bake. Yeah, though so there seems to be a, a stasis of some kind. Yeah, is this the, mis the misinformation clears? Yeah, this is already starting to happen. Yeah, you guys are smart enough, you've wisened up, you've gotten over that. You gotta make jokes about everything now, you know. Yeah, you know. Your job is to entertain the audience and make them happy, not to cover the news. Yeah, maybe this is the time to cover the softest stories. Oh, buddy, we're scrambling today. <laughs> what else is going on? It's very hard when there's a, a horrifying giant story like this. It really eats all the news space. Yeah. And so it's hard to find out what else is going on. Speaking of which, was it day one that you worked in a Billy Joel joke? Was it? Was it day one or day two? Oh, I don't remember. 
because it was a we didn't start the fire, right? And, Possible. And, it's uh, funny. I don't remember. In a close which, look, yeah, I remember going out. Ah. We're like what was on the show today. <laughs> so disposable in my brain. I just was delighted. I was like, right out the gate. <laughs> We got, <laughs> we got a lead and start the fire. Oh my goodness. That was... of my mind. Oh, that's right. Yes, I do remember that now. Yep. <laughs> very happy to hear it. It was very fun. <laughs> All right, let's talk about this song. Um, first, underproduced because it's uh, clearly uh, not meant to be released, right? Um, yeah, I mean, not as like a radio hit. Yeah, and wonderful for being underproduced. It's got the count at the beginning, right? The uh, right, the one, two, that thing, right? Uh, it's one of the only times when I hear him improvising in a song where I think, eh, is this faux improvising or is this improvising? No, this is him screwing around with his band, legit. Legit. Because yeah. I like that. I would bet, I don't know if they got it in one take, but I'll bet it wasn't many. Yeah. And I thought, oh, this is funny because it sounds like a thing you would do if you're a mu musician, get really tired of counting things off. <laughs> all the time, so make fun of that. Yeah. A real insight. Uh, Your huh? audience kids. So yep. they'll like that. Yeah. Even kids have heard the count off by now. Yeah. Drum heavy. A lot of drum in this song. Yep. Good old classic blues stuff. Yeah. Great melody. I like the melody a lot. And fun to sing along with. Yeah. For a song that's unreleased, it's just one of those that's, well, it's released now. It's on what? It's either on My Lives and it's, yeah, on, it's on, it is on My Lives. And probably Volume 1 and 2. It's probably on there too because you just get to put a lot of shit on Volume 1 and 2. <laughs> that's right. Because <laughs> there's just going to be like, uh, how do we finish this? album we were supposed to have 30 songs or whatever yeah but very enjoyable i honestly don't think i'd heard it really I, maybe not I, great or i have a it, terrible memory <laughs> it's very possible i mean i you know i came across this song because when i was early in my fandom was when this album was in stores. Ah, okay. It was like probably 83. Yeah. When, you know, and I didn't know anything about music. So and I, someone had played some Billy Joel for me. Uh, and I was like, this is great. And I, I'm going to follow. I'm going to buy everything I can by this guy. And like, I just couldn't even see other artists' names. <laughs> reference point yeah I didn't know who springsteen was i didn't know anything and i was like ah billy joe he's on this uh, children's album i'm gonna buy this children's album <laughs> that's great I, I had it at some point for a while when uh you know how dicey that is too because i've done that with artists i did that with elvis i barely discovered elvis and i'm like i'm gonna buy any elvis album and the first album I bought was this effing gospel album. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly what I did with uh, Bob Dylan. Oh, Lord, that's disappointing, right? Some weird. Yeah. And I should have known there was a giant cross on the cover. Yeah. I was like, oh, no, that's not what I thought I was getting. Oh, shoot. I thought, <laughs> I thought this was an ironic cross. No, he means this one. Eh. Oh, this is a for real Christian cash grab. Yeah, it's a <laughs> damn album by Elvis. And you know, you're a kid, you don't have a lot of money, so then that's the Elvis al album you own until you can afford a second album. Right. And there were no resources for us. No. Nope. Like recently, I heard on the radio, I heard a song by this band called Hurry. It was a Philadelphia band. Loved the song. So then I go to Apple Music. They have so many albums, right? So already I know that. Now I can go to various music websites. Hey, what's their most critically acclaimed album? And I got it. And I, I don't know what the order is, when it came out. I was like, 
just whatever their best one is is what I'll get. <laughs> That's very smart. Yes, yeah, so you're stuck listening to Joshua fit the battle. Vividly mm -hmm. remember it. It's because that's the only listenable one because it sounds a little bit like rock and roll. The rest of them are like, how great thou art. Ugh. <laughs> Boy, oh, that, I don't know. If that don't make you an atheist, I don't know what will. Disappointing Elvis. Disappointing record purchases. Yeah, that's, um, that's what turned mine. me away from the Lord. <laughs> yeah, they say it's rock and roll. I'm like, no, it's no. The gospel will kill it quick. All right. <laughs> All right. So I like the music. Let's see. The notes uh, off the cuff, drum. I like that. On the count. Oh, also really sounds like a bar song. Yeah. Basically a good little bar song. And um, I really love all the little, the gibberish. Yep. Which is great. It's And going online, it's like, there's so many theories about what the gibberish is. I'm like, why are there theories? It seems pretty clear to me that it's him and his little friend talking in their nonsense language. Yeah. And there's all these <laughs> fan theories. I'm like, this is not the one to overthink. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and he's not the guy to do that. If it's gibberish, well, it's gibberish. He meant for it to be gibberish. Oh, yeah. He's not. And I mean that in the best way. He's not being super pretentious. He's nope. making a song for kids. Making a song for kids. Exactly. And useful in the sense in the way that I get the impression that he's of all the rock and roll dads he's one of the more dad dads yeah so, i'll bet i feel that in a very nice way that he's just a dad dad mccartney's that too mccartney loved his was, was all about being a dad yeah john Lennon wasn't so much till the second one <laughs> he was the opposite yeah <laughs> um, why don't you start it off oh yeah Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So one, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> I got a friend that nobody knows. Nobody knows but me. I got a friend that nobody knows. Nobody knows but me. Now, see, I think these lyrics are wrong on my website. I think the actual lyric is, Mama thinks I'm talking to myself again. Is that what you have? Yeah, but I got it after this. It says, I got a friend that nobody knows. Nobody knows but me. I got a friend that nobody knows. Nobody knows but me. Oh, mama thinks I'm talking to myself again. That's what it says here, too. Right. What I've got on this website that I've got to stop using is, ooh, mama, please don't tell it to myself again. Oh, my God. I'm going to recommend... Uh, and it'll actually be useful if we start for a while going to the same website. <laughs> I've yeah. been joel.com, which is his official uh, website. And if you go under music and lyrics, you can go right to a lyric page that has everything, all of it in alphabetical order. Look at that. Yeah. And it's under nobody knows but me. Nobody knows but me. There it is. Yep. Ah, much better. <laughs> oh, mama thinks I'm talking to myself again. I know she thinks I'm out of my mind, but I'm really talking to my secret friend. We get along just fine. This is, which, uh, is hilarious to me. Yeah. Not, not a secret best friend. We don't get along. <laughs> we get along fine. <laughs> A secret friend he's okay yeah just... get along fine <laughs> have you met have you met my imaginary acquaintance <laughs> he's got an imaginary acquaintance yeah <laughs> and his imaginary acquaintance has a an imaginary friend of his own i don't care for him but he comes over sometimes too <laughs> not as much which is great uh, you know, I, his first takeaway is not I have this imaginary friend, and isn't that great? I get to do imaginary stuff. His first takeaway is like, 
my mother thinks I'm crazy. Right, that too. <laughs> mother has no idea what a child is. <laughs> she thinks I'm crazy because I'm talking to myself. Yeah, she's never met a child. Yeah. And she thinks <laughs> she thinks I've got a severe personality disorder. Yeah. And I'm just talking to my secret friend. We get along yeah. just fine. That's wonderful. Uh, it's such a delight. Yeah. I got a friend that nobody hears. Nobody hears but me. I get a friend that nobody hears. Nobody hears but me. Oh, I always go to sleep when my daddy says, I kiss him and turn out the light. But my friend is sitting on the edge of the bed talking to me every night. That's even still wonderfully weird. It's a little weird. Just sitting there talking to me. Yeah. I guess they're both talking, but it does sound like his imaginary friend is droning on and on. That's what I was thinking. He was like, uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> You've told me this story about the candy forest. Oh. <laughs> yes, I'm sure it was a delightful chocolate stream. Jesus, can I, I'm tired. Inside, it's not you. Yeah. Maybe sometimes <laughs> listen to one of my stories. <laughs> uh, and he's just sitting on the edge of the bed. He's not flying around. Yeah, it's true. Uh, 10 feet tall. No, he's just sitting there. He might have a cat. Yeah. He might have mistaken a cat for an imaginary friend. His imaginary friend, though, definitely wears loafers. I think. <laughs> yeah. Just not the coolest imaginary friend. Imaginary well, friend. Really is... an indictment of his imagination. Yeah. His imaginary yeah. friend says stuff like, is it cold in here? Well, I don't know. I feel fine. If you're cold, close the window. Yeah, well, I can't. I'm imaginary. Could you close the window? Oh, God damn it. Fine. I'll... No, Mom, it's fine. But now I'm hot. <laughs> uh, great. So we got each parent out of the way. <laughs> yep. Everybody says it's just a stage I'm in. Everybody says I'm just a kid. But they've never traveled to the places I've been. Or done the crazy things that my friend and I did. Well, this taking a shift. Yes. Um, no details. <laughs> no details, please. It starts to, yeah. First, I think you and your imaginary friend are lying. You've done no. that. <laughs> yeah. You guys hang out in the basement and play D&D. <laughs> Tell everybody how much you partied. Oh, one time we drank a beer. See the places we've been. <laughs> Name a place. Oh, you wouldn't know it. Yeah, it's a fun place, though. So fun. Give me one detail of that place. It's fun. It's you. Well, it's not. It's not here. And it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. We did so many crazy things. Oh man. Uh, by the way, this drawing for this Billy Joel album is it's not, not great. It's not great, and it's I still like it better than the River of Dreams drawing. <laughs> Who? It must be like one of his kids did it. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, it still looks more like him than the River of Dreams one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The eyes look tired, and you know, <laughs> the eyebrows are closer to correct. Yeah, they're not exactly the same as each other, which is pretty wonderful. Yeah, it does look like he's singing. Yeah, this is a kid's picture of Daddy's Hangover. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, or maybe that's his imaginary friend. Oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> the nose is great. Is the a full grown adult. Yeah, the nose is what Florida. <laughs> Oh yeah, I see it. <laughs> backwards, backwards, Italy. Yep. But it's definitely the right nose. That's the nose of a former boxer. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's the note <laughs> he had the day after when he made a good decision to just play music. Uh, well, I got a friend that nobody sees, nobody sees but me. I got a friend that nobody sees, nobody sees but me. I guess we're just repeating ourselves now. <laughs> it gets real repetitive, which, you know, I guess you got to do in a children's song. That is a kid's song. Not yeah. quite. Baby shark level. <laughs> And then nobody knows, nobody knows what me confront. Nobody knows, nobody hears, nobody sees, nobody spoken to, huh? And nobody can. Wow. Actually, that's funny. I was like, it's very repetitive. I'm like, no, wait. There's this one little sentiment here that's pretty great as yeah. far as an affirmation for a kid. Legit, that's a great affirmation. It's this belongs to me. Yes, it's That's very kids to learn. It's uh, yeah, it's a <laughs> yeah, it's no no sharing. Yeah, <laughs> surely one of the better lessons you can learn in life are the things that are yours. No doubt, your laugh. I remember when I was a kid, and I will never forget this fucking teacher. I <laughs> laughed at something, and the teacher said something about your laugh is too loud, and I got mad. And I went, that's the way I fucking laugh. And I said the F word and I was like eight, but I was enraged. How dare wow. you? And I was right. <laughs> yeah. That's and especially for a kid who you don't own anything. Yeah. All you've got is your fucking traits. How dare you laugh at a thing? How dare you experience joy? Ah, oh, you're a good teacher. I get enough of that at home. Yeah, your laugh. Shut up, lady. Let me find out her name. I'm gonna go back there. <laughs> <laughs> what we do to kids? Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. And we you all were. We all were one. I'm really good, by the way, at remembering what it was like. That's to great. Kids. I'm terrible. I'll tell I you a few tricks that happened. I'll tell you a few tricks. This is one of the most amazing things you can do for a kid. Uh, especially if it's a relative of yours that you're meeting for the first time. Um, my, bro my brother brought his two uh, grandkids with him, and, and they're great kids, two girls, and they're 11 or 12 or whatever, and brought them to the house. And uh, they stayed with us for a couple of days. And I said, hey, I'm your Uncle Jim. And I said two things to him as my introduction. I said, you have never met me. Um, we have a room for you with a door that locks. You do not ever need to give me a hug, even if your grandpa says so. <laughs> I, I like meeting you. I'd like to shake your hand and we'll get to know each other. But you don't ever have to hug me. I nice. found out, yeah, I always say that to kids if they're relatives, because I know there's some well-meaning adult. Right. Who's setting the stage for confused boundaries as later. Yeah. You are obliged to make no physical content. We'll talk. You'll get to know me. I'll get to know you. Right. What they got home, my brother told me, yeah, they went, did a lot of stuff. They went like rafting and everything. They asked what their favorite part of the trip was. They said it was my house. <laughs> oh, that's the best. Yeah. And this is what I did. I set up the TV to play what they liked. One of them got comfortable enough to, with me to tell me she drew a comic. I asked if she'd show it to me. We went through it in detail. I told her what I liked about it. I was like, this is really cool. You should keep drawing. And it, it was very cool. Great. Yeah. Not hard. The only thing you need to remember, Alex, if you forget anything else as a, about what you were as a kid, is when you were a kid, you just wanted people to see you. That's yes. Yeah. And that has not changed. Great. You don't yes. need to remember anything That's else. Cool. Yeah. Yep. They fucking love it. Yeah. And they deserve it. They're a little should be the minimum. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's uh, squeezing them into various molds. Yep. Yep. It's pretty some easy to, to make them like you. Yeah. And some people have to squeeze them into molds. I understand that you're a teacher, you're a parent, whatever. But other <laughs> people, give them a little breathing room. Yeah. Um, Sue has a very funny story about having her niece in town 
when her niece was like eight years old and her niece's parents were a little bit like, you're going to do this. We're going to make you go here. And so Sue's thing was like, when she comes here, she's like, whatever you want to do, we're going to do it. Um, I'm not going to say no to anything. And so it was like, oh, I, let's, I want to go for a carriage ride in the park. Great. Went on a carriage ride. I want to get ice cream after the carriage ride. Got the ice cream. And she said, like, within four hours, she was like, no more stuff. <laughs> I take it back. Because the kid was starving to do all these insane things and eat sugar and, you know, just make a lot of bad choices. I let her try cocaine. Okay, listen. <laughs> all right, we got to sit down for a second. We're going to uh, cocaine, sure, but that's it for today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, it was very funny how the kid was like oh hell yeah then here yeah. we go I was, I was at the grocery store the other day and this kid was going ah, ah. so I started going ah. just because I <laughs> like doing that to kids and the kid laughed and then another adult did it and I went this rarely works out this well this is great <laughs> We are, our downstairs neighbors have a two-year-old. Ooh, yeah. Adorable. And, you know, he gets fussy and tired sometimes. Sure. And I just, like, talk to him like a grown-up. And it's very funny to me. <laughs> He'll be, it's just be in the restaurant. You're like, eh, eh, And I'll just go, oh, I know, right? It's so loud in here. It's like, I can't stand it. I'm trying to be nice, but I can't stand it either. And he'll just start looking at me and listening. And he doesn't know what I'm doing. Yeah. And he's like, oh, so someone's directing their comments to me instead of like singing or whatever to try to make me stop. And not talking in a weird voice. You're talking in an adult yeah. voice. Yeah. He's talking to me like he talks to those other grownups. A I lot. don't know what that means, but it's fascinating. Yeah. A lot of people advise as soon as you can get away from talking in a silly voice to your kids yeah i have heard that counter argument dads should do it sometimes because as a dad you you're probably you're prone to gruffness or whatever traditionally and it's good because i've seen some amazing i always love seeing a good dad yeah a good dad will make me cry i just see a good dad with a kid and go oh good okay there you go yeah dude in my neighborhood he must be six nine <laughs> just a giant man. <laughs> and he's the gentlest dude and his daughter just adores him and he right. always talks to her not down to her but he's still talking to a kid you know there's a distinction he's yes it's a shift but it doesn't have to be <laughs> like silly voice time it doesn't have to be. <laughs> yeah but it's it's gentle and it's yeah, he's got a Mister Rogers quality in a in a way of uh, understanding where his human this human being he's talking to is at. Yeah. Right, I love it. Well, Lord, that's a tiny song, but what a lovely song! I like it. I'm going to intentionally listen to it some more because it's fun. It's very fun. Yeah, and I like that it's a little grumpy. Yeah, me too. It reminds and me. I think, I think kids will dial into that. It reminds me of like a weird little Beatles song that you would never normally listen to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Where you're like, is this a children's song or yeah. does it just sound like one? Like Her Majesty is a nothing song, but I like listening to it sometimes. You remember that song? I don't know that one. Her Majesty is a pretty nice girl, but, uh, but she doesn't have a lot to say. Her Majesty is a pretty nice girl, but she changed from day to day. I want to tell her that I love her a lot, but I got to get a belly full of line, wine. Okay. Yeah. Her Majesty is a pretty nice girl. Someday I'm going to make her mine. Oh, yeah. Someday I'm going to make her mine. Boom, boom. That's the whole song. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah. Oh. This one's pretty damn easy. <laughs> oh, no. Big shot. Um, oh. Well, what kind of animal is it? That's a, that's a little baby goat. That's right. A kid. That's right. And now, oh, Billy the Kid. It's Billy yeah, the Kid. It's Billy, <laughs> it's Billy Goat the Kid, yeah. 
<laughs> and it it fits really nice too because um you know you know his his size will take you by surprise look at that little guy oh his size yep. Yep. yep that's really good <laughs> i literally was sitting here learning, thinking of what song has kid in it mm. <laughs> and i skipped the whole billy part right billy yeah billy goat the kid that's Great. the one thing if i was going to be a go crazy and buy a farm goats everywhere they're so cute they're really cute i don't know how they are to live with they're pleasant if you're willing if you're willing to meet them on the field in which they live emotionally yeah. and physically because they're just fun Pigs. people have them in their houses huh some people have them like in their house and stuff, which I'm oh, less keen on. Those houses are probably fun to visit for a while, but they probably smell to high heaven. That's what I think. If I've You're... been out all day, if I've been out all day in normal world, sometimes when I enter my bedroom, even I will go, oh, that's a lot of dog hair. <laughs> I'll notice. Yeah, yeah. And I'll realize, wow, this is funky. If anybody visited and needed my room, I would need to make an effort. Yeah. So it was I'm... a little bit hellish having a cat in a small apartment for years. Yeah. No, just nobody ever come here. <laughs> this is this apartment belongs to a cat and I live with him. Yeah. And you don't no one should have to. Unless your favorite smell is acid. Yeah. If you like a good is that a high or a low pH? Ooh, high. Yeah. It's, oh. it's definitely a yellow, yellow. It's definitely a bright, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, I'm being, it's, it's taking me back in a terrible way. What, yeah, what a lovely kitty, though, huh? It's a kitty. Yeah. But you have, worth it. Uh, by the way, we're 10 away from a hundo of our show. Fun for your lives. And a friend of mine who also listens to the show had an idea. So I'll tell you about the idea later because we don't necessarily have to commit to it, but he has an idea for the hundred. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It still doesn't involve a lot of effort because it never should. No. Thank God. I don't have a lot of effort. No. <laughs> no. It's over. Um, do you know the name of the album that this song was on? Oh, the original album, not the My Lives and not the retrospective. Oh, the name of the children's album that was released in 1982 and won a Grammy, by the oh, way. I can get this question right. No, I don't. Oh, good job. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> what if they let you get away with that on Jeopardy? That's a kid's <laughs> joke for a kid's show. A joke for a kid's show. From a dad. Uh, what am I? I was about to try to guess the name of an album. <laughs> Ooh, it's You'll a, never get it. Uh, rocking, rocking kids, and their rocking lives. Oh man, it's not Pretty close. No, well, you know. I was gonna. I was trying to try to help you, but no, not close. Uh, In Harmony Two. So there's another one out there somewhere. Wow. That I've never researched or thought about. Is it joke version In Harmony Two, as in also, or just a, a two on the album cover? The number two. Yeah. No, it's not uh, the Airport Chilies. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a too. In yeah. Harmony 2. There must be a 1, right? Unless We're that's the joke. Unless that's the joke. Pretty In Harmony. Cool. Oh, no. Well, they wouldn't have called it 1. Oh, yeah. Right? True. Yeah. In Harmony 2 is a compilation album. So that... Oh, the... oh. There's a whole Wikipedia about it. In Harmony was a Sesame Street record. Ha. Huh. 
Yeah. And it probably had things like letter V on it. Uh, I imagine it had some, let's see, tracks. <laughs> let's find the tracks. In Harmony, a Sesame Street record. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, no, it, it had uh, legit rock stars on it. Oh, dope. Okay. Doobie Brothers, James Taylor, Carly Simon, Bette Midler, oh, Ernie and Cookie Monster, with their song, Share. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I... I kids album i i love james taylor but on a kids album i bet i wouldn't enjoy whatever he did because it would be far too earnest yeah probably the song's called jelly man kelly oh maybe it's great then <laughs> there's no way to know because if he start doing something not like uh too lessony and he's just doing something fun then that's great yeah, hmm. I, I was, do you remember the song Let Her Be? Oh, yeah, great. Yeah, the lyric. When I ask my mother what become, comes between A and C, my mother answers sweetly, let her be. So good. Did you, um, with Sue and I watch, I had a weird memory of watching The Muppet Show. And they had, they had done like a music video for, uh, that hey stop listen what's that sound oh that yeah sound? and uh and so not and so it goes um for what <laughs> it's worth, for what it's worth yeah yeah um, hard title to remember because it never appears in the song for what it's worth right? so i had the memory that it's like they did something on the muppet show with that song and so we looked it up and watched it and it's crazy i'm gonna watch that it changed some of the lyrics um i won't tell you anymore yeah just enjoy that <laughs> i'm writing that down and then when we're done tonight um i'm doing that now for what it's worth weird that i remember the title but i remember the title because it's one of those annoying songs where well i'd like to listen to that song and you struggle to figure out what it's called sure Speaking of pre-internet days, good luck figuring out what that effing song is yes, called. Good luck to you. Um, yeah, not unlike the song we just did. Yeah, yes. But at least in this case, I looked up the title you gave me, Billy Joel, and then I saw a set of lyrics that included the phrase. Right. Crucial. And, Got you there. Yeah. And it was only one song. It was like, well, it's got to be this. And if it's not, won't it be funny that we listen to different songs? So I decided not to stress about it. <laughs> Um, I, uh, <laughs> I'm laughing because I just I got an email with our guests for tomorrow's show and it really made me laugh because we have Reba McIntyre and Werner Herzog rad <laughs> oh the whiplash wow and uh, when is this uh, the old joke when is this so the show's tomorrow night or is the show in 1995 <laughs> wow like a lot of our shows are in 1995. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, McIntyre, make all the jokes you want. Just a pleasant lady. Yeah, she's real nice. Yeah. Uh, here's what I... The Night is Still Young is what we'll be talking about. Ooh. Oh, I fucking love that song. Yeah, I like the use of the word still. And I, I just like that because it's a, a the old phrase, the night is young. The Night is Still Young is actually very clever, I think. Yeah. And it is a good song. Oh, it's great. Yeah. It'll be episode 91. And and I'm sure by then, this whole thing will be solved. Oh, yeah. We'll all be laughing. <laughs>